This channel and the videos in it are meant for vapors or smokers who want to quit. This is an educational and info channel intended only for viewers who are 18 years of age or older. Viewer's discretion is advised. Ordered the moment I saw it on Fastnet. That was in February. It shipped after four months in June. Hey folks, Korax here. This was the longest wait I ever had for anything. And I noticed on the forums that many were cancelling their orders. But I didn't. So why didn't I? Well, I have three solid reasons. Firstly, I like how it looks. Secondly, it has a very nice size to weight to capacity ratio in my opinion. And thirdly, for 30 bucks, what the heck? So am I satisfied? Hmm, I believe yes. Which is why this video. The Vigor 81 by Blitz. In my opinion, it is a darn good skonker. No, not without its quirks, but those doesn't affect its performance at all. Let's take a closer look. Standard shrink wrapped cardboard box here. Nothing specifically exciting. Notwithstanding the picture printed, this sticker indicates the color of the device inside. Under the box, you have your usual write-ups, but take a note of the contents printed. No, you don't receive everything. Ah, beautiful. I'm still falling for the look. Inside, the device comes well secured in a sponge overlay. Under the sponge padding, you have a paper separator. Typically, this is the place where we should find our user manual and warranty card. Unfortunately, these two are not included. But you receive an USB cable. This device is supposed to be firmware upgradable and could be internally charged. However, avoid. It is always wise to charge your batteries externally through a dedicated Lion charger. And yes, we also receive a spare pull tab. This is for the juice bottle. We will see it in action in a minute. That's all is there to unbox. Now for a deep look at the squonker itself. Wow. Oh my my, isn't she gorgeous? Nice velvety panels. These are plastic, but the main body is metal. Zinc aluminum to be exact. I am all in for this dirty yellow and black combination. It looks classy in my opinion. Good that the button is also black and encased in yellow metal. It makes it pop out. Looks nice. The paint job out of the box is fine. No blemishes anywhere. Neither on the plastic panels. And both are matte finished, satiny, not shiny polished, which is a good thing as I see it. Did I mention the feel is velvety on the panels? It actually feels very nice to touch.
The honeycomb pattern is also well done. No imperfections anywhere. And I'm happy that they went for this honeycomb inlay rather than some gaudy graphics. This truly makes it look rich. That's true folks. At the outset, this mod looks and feels very posh. Unless you knew what it is priced at, you would think it is a high-end device. Oh my my. And except for the CNC cut alphabet B, which lights up by the way, there are no other markings on the whole unit. Which is one more wise thing done here. Underneath that, there is this 0.9 inch OLED screen. Yes, yes, it is OLED folks. And then you have your plus and minus buttons. Both unmarked, but a non-issue because by habit we understand that the top one is always plus and the bottom one is minus. At the end of the line, we have the micro USB port. Bottom has three vent holes. That is for the electronics because they are very well encased. There is an elevated rim going across the three sides of the frontage, which seem to be there for protecting the screen and the buttons. In any case, it looks nice and makes it easy to find the front against the flat rear. The buttons are nice and clicky, all three of them. And there is a positive feedback when you press them. By the way, the placement of this firing button is also well done. It naturally sits right under your thumb, any which hand you use the mod. Spring loaded 510 and it seems to be gold plated. <laughs> Don't hold me to that, it is not mentioned anywhere in the website. Just that by the shine I see, it seems to be gold plated to me. External view done, now let's take a look inside. Plastic panel held by two flat magnets. Pretty strong piece. Neat and clean inside. This is the 18650 adapter. A silicone sleeve. One pull tap for the bottle is already installed. You don't need to touch the bottle. Just pull it out. Standard silicone bottle, but with a unique lid. Holds 10 ml by the way. This is an innovative system folks. I haven't seen it elsewhere. Notice this cutout bay. Nice fat stainless steel juice feeder here. You just align it with the feeder tube and press it in. Then softly press the bottom and you are all set. A slide pull and the bottle dislodges too. How cool is that? By the way, this is a strong multi-layered nylon twine. This is not going to easily snip. I have refilled the bottle many times and I have no issues with it. In any case, even if it breaks, what the heck? Just replace it with any other suitable string. We have many lying in our homes, don't we? And also remember, there is a spare in the package as well. Pull ribbon for the battery. And battery polarities are also clearly marked. CNC engraved on the body. Nice. I like that they are not just a paint job or a sticker work. And the positive end is also spring loaded. 
As I said, it accepts all the three popular sizes of batteries. 21700, 2700 and 18650. But I would not recommend 700 series batteries in it. That is 21700 and 2700s. They get so tight fit that they are nearly impossible to remove. And the rear panel being glued doesn't help either. These scratches are the result of me trying to remove my 21700, which also got ruined too. As such, 18650 is the only way to go with this mod. By the way, we place the adapter sleeve on the button end, positive side, in this mod. I don't know why, if I do it the traditional way, that is if I insert the sleeve through the negative side, the mod doesn't fire up, ever. And as expected, placing 18650s or removing them is a non-issue here. I have tried many batteries on it, all fit well and work perfectly. Upon insertion, the company name briefly flashes on the screen, but the mod will not turn on. We have to do the 5 clicks routine. There you go. On display is the operating mode, the set wattage if it is on power mode like now, or the set centigrade or Fahrenheit if it is on temp control mode. Then you have the ohms of the ATI attached and the voltage being applied to the coil. Underneath, of course, you have the battery meter. Now three clicks of the main firing button takes you to the sub-menus. First is bypass. Here the mod becomes unregulated. The battery voltage is directly applied to the coil. But the usual protection of the mod remains. Three clicks again. And now you are in curve mode. Here you can configure your ramp time, preheat or power burst, 5 seconds, 10 seconds draw and what not. Three clicks will take you to the next level. This is our temperature protection mode and we are in nickel. We can select between nickel, titanium and stainless steel, three types of wires. Up or down button increases or reduces the degrees. In Fahrenheit, you can reach till 600 degree. Down button obviously reduces it. You can go down till 200 degrees. One press and it takes you to centigrade. Max is 315 degrees. You can reduce it to 100. So the range in centigrades is 100 to 300 degrees Celsius. And in Fahrenheit, it is between 200 to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Now again three clicks and you get to titanium. The same rigmarole happens again. Once again three clicks and you come to stainless steel. The same thing. And final three clicks brings you back to wattage mode. Now here we can reach till 81 watts. No round robining and no accelerated running as well. Bottom one takes you down to 5 watts. So in power mode we have a range of 5 watt to 81 watts. Now if you press both the buttons together it will lock your device. Now the ATI won't fire. Same way, press both the buttons together to unlock the device. Now you can fire it to glory. Again, 5 clicks off. Similarly, 5 clicks on. 
Now, like I said, you can light up this big B. It can be lit with a single color or multitude of colors, for which you press this firing button twice. The first one is white. Every time you fire your Addy, this light will come up. Again press it twice and you get blue. Two press again and you get green. Once more two press and you have red now. And finally again twice and this is RGB mode. Every time you press your firing button, it will take random colors. You get the point. You can switch it off also. Same two clicks and it will not light up anymore. Simple and easy menu system, isn't it? Though there is no user manual provided, yet figuring out the menu and the button enactments is absolutely easy. No hanky panky here. Now let's check the dimensions of this device. It is quite comfortably sized in my opinion. Easy to hold and vape with. Height wise, we are looking at 81 mm. The width is around 51.5 mm. And it is slightly wider around the vertical center line. As such, the sides are roughly 23.5 mm. While the midsection is nearly 27 mm. I know the website mentions them slightly different, but these are what I measured. Now let me plonk some atties and show you. I don't have anything wider than 25 mm. So this is the maximum I can offer. See, there is more than a millimeter space left on either sides. So yes, a 27 plus mm addy will sit fine here. This is a 23 mm addy. And now we are looking at our standard 22 mm drippers. A 21 mm dripper now. And here is my preferred 18 mm Chalice 4 by Mark Bugs. Looks pretty cool, don't you think? This is quite a heavy mod. All skonkers are. Empty shell without battery and juice bottle. It weighs nearly 165 grams. Add a battery. And it shoots up to 219 grams. Let's fill it and check. Using Golden Greeks 7030 juice. Remember, don't overfill it. You have to leave space for the siphon. This is 10 ml here, folks. Match the slot, press it in, push the bottom down, tuck in the ribbon and place the pull tab in a crevice. These are going nowhere now. And how does the pump action work? Well, going great guns folks. And now we have a whopping 244 grams rebel here. Add an atty to the mix. And yes, we are looking at a 281 grams powerhouse. Yes.
added a fresh wick. Wait for it. There you go. Easy squeezy bottle folks. And as expected, it sucks back any excess juice as well. 1.2 ohms, firing at 16 watts. Let's vape. <laughs> Never thought I'll put in so much effort reviewing a non-high-end device. But you get the point, right? Though not an expensive gear like these, it still is worth the time. I've been using this for a while now and it has given me no troubles at all. During the close-ups, I had generally given you all the good points about this Conquer. But it is not flawless. So let me begin with listing the things I don't like about this mod. And there are quite a few. Let me start off with the packaging. There is no user manual included, even though it is listed on the box. Same is with the warranty card too not included though listed however that is not of much importance but a user manual is i believe the project got so delayed and the queries started piling up so they just hurried up the shipments i hope the next batches come with everything included now the bottle is fine works well but it is silicone and they are prone to cuts and snips at least one additional spare should have been included in the package, if not more. And given the nature of the design, unique but proprietary. No other silicone bottle will fit here. One cut and it is a gone girl. This is a major con in my opinion. Another big issue I have is with its battery space. It is supposed to accept all three popular sizes of batteries. 21700, 2700 and 18650. But the space is so compact that 2700s and 2700s will definitely get ruined if you are able to insert them in the first place. Though touted for, this mod actually is unfit for 700 series batteries. This is a major design flaw. As such, this is the second big con of this Conquer. For some reason beyond me, they could not magnetize the rear panel and just glued it as an afterthought which makes 700 series batteries all the more difficult to remove why oh why now after all that you on the mod and look at the screen only to find the display tilted this is blasphemous in my opinion and since i easily chipped my unit in multiple places i believe you have to baby this product enough said Lastly, the website is all hunky-dory, but where is the firmware update page? Though it is a non-issue for me, I have never updated anything of mine. But I understand, many will be pissed off by this omission. I hope they get their act together soon. Seems like a lot of negatives, eh? But hold on there. It has very many nice things as well. Here are the positive factors which genuinely keep me hooked to this device. Like I said in the beginning of the video, so why was I so keen on this device? Well, I have three reasons. Firstly, I loved how it looked. Secondly, in my opinion, it has a nice size to weight to capacity ratio. And finally, for $30, it was a no-brainer. Yes. Those three things are the deal grabber for me. But wait, there's more. This beautiful bottle system 
is definitely a pleasure to deal with. Super easy to install and remove and functions flawlessly. Absolutely a cost effective and easy way of handling skonking containers in my opinion. I haven't seen it before and wonder why others had not incorporated this system before. Add to that for an 18650 this is a goddamn nice battery compartment. Every battery of mine sits well here. And they are super easy to remove as well. Good that they have included this pull tab ribbon. It helps. This pull tab is also a good thing going on here friends. Strong and sturdy and makes the bottle easy to remove. So changing batteries or refilling the device is absolutely a non-issue here. Coupled with very well placed buttons, using this conquer is an easy peasy task. Yes, in my opinion, these panels look stunning and to top that they are very well fitting as well. Good magnets here folks. Holds firmly, no squeaking, no rattling, no sounds. And remember there is a curvature in the mid section yet everything sits flush, no gaps at all anywhere. This is actually a very well done mod I must say. <laughs> if you get past that ugly tilt the interface is actually an uncomplicated system. There is no brain crunching required at all. Everything here is common sense folks and if you had been using a regulated mod, it cannot get any simpler than this. Not only that I find 81 watts good enough, I never use anything beyond 20 anyway. But I also find it powers up correctly and efficiently. I have been comparing it side by side with a DNS 75 using the same addy back and forth and I find no difference between the two vis-a-vis -vis vape quality and satisfaction. Thus, this inexpensive device is actually performing very similar to our high-end devices which surely demands a well-earned nod for the folks at Blitz. Now, isn't the ability to colorfully light up your room very satisfying? Yes, it's a gimmick. But damn my soul, at 57, I'm actually enjoying playing with these colorful lights. You can switch it off also. Same two clicks and it'll not light up anymore. Actually, don't on it at all if that's not your thing. And finally, friends, what's a squonker if it does not get moist inside? I never had one which didn't. This doesn't. You know I've used it long enough. But every time I open the panels, there is not a drop of e-liquid inside. Nor any condensation. This thing remains bone dry all the time. Even the top cap of the bottle and the juice feeder post pole I find are always dry. Not to forget the 510 plate under the addy. That remains dry always as well. That's something to rave about indeed, don't you think? Worth mentioning here, I had also purchased a similarly priced device earlier. Long back, about two years back I believe. But I have never made a video of it. But I'm making a video for this. That says something about this conquer, right? The Vigor 81 by Blitz The bottom line my friends is goodness far outweighs its quirks and none of them actually hampers its use. It's a simple well performing regulated skonker and I keep repeating it but let me close the video stating once again that for its price this is an outstanding device. I give it 5 stars. As long as it does what it is supposed to do and it does it well at that for 30 bucks this is a worthwhile purchase. Definitely a daily beater folks and I fully recommend it. Ah, oh, what a vape. That brings us to the end of this video folks. Cheers and have a great weekend ahead. 
and always remember vaping is a healthier alternative and we have the right to make that